Hi, my name's Stuart Lynch, and this is the third of a nine-part series on understanding how to parse JSON using the Codable protocol in Swift and Swift UI. In this video, we'll see how we can get the contents of a file that is part of the bundle of the application, and if it's JSON, parse using our decodable protocol. We'll be safer in our implementation this time around using guard statements in case we have errors and need to crash out. If this is something you want to learn, keep watching. In the resources folder for this playground, there is a flatcolors.json file. Trying to discern the file structure from here is not easy. It's best to take a look at somehow formatting this into a more readable format so we can build our classes or structs. Let me copy the contents of this file to my clipboard. There are lots of JSON formatters and validators out there on the internet. I just always happen to fall back on this one. I'll leave a link in the notes below. Just paste the JSON into the text box and click on Process. It's nicely formatted. We can copy from here, go back to our flatcolors.json file, and paste it in and get a better idea of what we're looking at. Using this information, we can now build our struct. We have two keys that map to strings, palette name and palette info, and the key palette colors that maps to an array of objects, each with six properties. So if we name our struct color palette and make sure it's decodable, we can start by creating our two properties for our strings, palette name and palette info. Next, inside our color palette struct, we can create another struct that represents the object with the six key value pairs. Let's call it palette color, and again make sure that it's decodable, and the properties will be as follows, using the key strings as property names, and making sure that we assign the correct value types based on what we see for the values in our key value pairs. We've got an int, a string, followed by three more ints, and finally a double. With the new struct defined, we can create a new property called palette colors, the same as this key value, and declare it as an array of palette color. The color palette struct itself is still decodable because all of the properties are decodable too. In Playgrounds, when you store a file in the Resources folder, it's equivalent to doing a drag and drop of a file into the Project Navigator on the left side of your Xcode screen in your own application. This is called the bundle. Unlike in our examples in the last video, we're going to be safe and use guard statements throughout to make sure that if we have any errors, we'll exit our application with a fatal error. Let's assign our bundle URL to a constant called sources URL. We do this by using bundle.main.url for resource, and our resource is flat colors with the extension JSON. If the file doesn't exist, we can exit with a fatal error. Now that we have the URL, we can get the data component of that file so we can decode it into our JSON. Remember from the last video that if we're going to decode using JSON decoder, we need a data object. In the last video, we'd just use let color data equals try exclamation data contents of sources URL. But since extracting the contents of our sources URL as data can throw an error, we'll use another guard statement to try and extract it with an optional try and assign it to the constant color data. If it fails, we again use a fatal error to report. Once we have that data, we can define our decoder as we always do. And then use one more guard statement to decode the data. Notice this time we use an optional try so that if the decoding fails, the code fails and prints a warning. The type we are decoding is a single color palette object, don't forget the dot self, and it's coming from the data that we got from the contents of the file in our bundle. We can test this out by seeing if we can get the palette name for our instance of color palette that we just created. We can also step through each of the colors in palette colors array to list all the palette color descriptions.
In the final video of this series, we'll be reading and saving data to the Applications Documents folder. This data will also be JSON data, so rather than show you here how to get data from the Apps Documents folder, I'll keep you in suspense until you finish this series. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have learned something. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That will encourage me to keep on creating more like this in an effort to help new and existing iOS developers hone their skills and move on to the next level. I am most active on Twitter, so be sure to follow me there and get all the latest news of what I'm up to.